In this tutorial, you will learn how to add volumetric fog to your scene using WeatherMaker for Unity. To get started, drag WeatherMaker Prefab into your scene. I am using the Viking Village scene, which is a freely downloadable uh, scene from Unity. You can Google that and find the download link for that if you want it, or you can just use your own scene. Once you have WeatherMaker Prefab in your scene, you will need to go to the Precipitation Fog section. Once you have done that, you'll notice that there's a fog profile here. Right now there's no fog in the scene. You can either click the fog checkbox here on the left to create the default fog, or you can hand edit the profile. Now if you're editing the profile during play mode, you will want to copy the original profile back on top because the profile is cloned to prevent accidental changes. So let's find the fog profile. We have fog full screen profile default. I would suggest you duplicate that into your own profile and we will call this fog profile new. Now you can safely edit this new fog profile without overwriting the original. Simply drag that on and now you are editing the original profile and your changes will be saved during play mode. Let's take a look at these properties. Fog mode is pretty self-explanatory. It controls how the density of the fog works. Exponential is going to get dense really quickly. So you may want to dial that down or go to linear mode in which case that fog density doesn't hurt quite as much. The fog color determines the tint of the fog. So let's swing this around to a different color and you'll notice that the fog changes color. The default tint is pretty good, but if you're going for some different effects, you can try tweaking that color. The fog emission color is also interesting because it will emit the color even at night. So as the scene goes to night, the fog becomes less and less visible. We have a little bit of moonlight here, but here almost no light. So in order to deal with that, you can create an emission color, lower that alpha value to reduce the emission color as well. Okay, let's get back to daytime. Next properties, fog light absorption simply determines how the log absorbs light. So as you tweak that, you can see that there's subtle changes. The light absorption that is lower will absorb more light, and a higher will absorb less light. Enable fog, light, fog lights is a, a good one. So right now I have a flashlight I can use. Let's turn this back to nighttime so you can see this flashlight in action. You can see that I've got a flashlight going there. It's a pretty long range, so it lights up a lot of the scene. If we turn Enable Fog Lights off, then we just get the default Unity, which looks pretty bad. So generally you'll want to keep that on, just watch the performance. We've got some ambient audio going on in the background, that's what you're hearing there. The Fog Lights setting is volumetric, so it is not just surface areas, but the entire fog volume that gets lit up, and it works with directional spot and point lights. Alright, let's take a look at fog noise. So right now noise multiplier is zero, means there is no noise, but there's a default seamless 3D texture being used for the fog for noise. So you can change a couple of things. The scale determines how that noise texture tiles. If you make it too small you'll see a lot of tiling, so generally you want to keep that around the default. The noise adder lets you kind of create gaps in the noise, so you can see that there's some noise in some areas and not in others. And then finally you've got this velocity. If you want it to be blowing, you can see that the fog is blowing. I will reduce this so you can kind of see the... there we go. You can see the fog kind of blowing around. There we go. That's pretty, pretty visible. So we've got a nice foggy dust storm going on here. Okay, so let's move on. Let's get rid of the noise so that you don't get uh, distracted. 
The fog noise sample count is just the ray marcher determines how the noise tiles. You can tweak that if you want, but 40 is a pretty good value. Uh, I do have directional shadows support, so as the sun goes, you can kind of see a little bit of sun rays. They are not as noticeable unless you lower that density. Now you can see there, there the fog rays are going. So as the sun sets, you can kind of see that lift right over the mountains there. And then over here, they come back on the other side. Do the same thing. So look right over here, over the village, you can see the light rays shooting out. Kind of a nice volumetric effect. A little bit more performance intensive, so if you're, if you're just looking for some sun shafts, I do have a, a solution that's a little more uh, performant, but can't work unless you're looking right at the sun, so I'll show you that. Uh, these powers all just control how the, how the volumetric shadows work. Pretty self-explanatory. Just look at the tooltip and tweak them until it looks the way you want. Alright, so let's take a look at the fog height. So that's a good one. So if you want your fog to only be a certain height, like 5, you can do that. And now we just have kind of this ground fog. So let's amp up the density here so you can see that a little better. We've got just kind of this ground fog going on here. And we could probably raise that height a little more so it looks a little better. There we go. A nice misty fog here, which when you combine that with the noise, you can get kind of some interesting effects. Kind of this blowing mist through the village here. And then that scale, you can tweak that till it looks nice. So you, you can really create some nice looking effects here, like lowering that velocity. Now you've really got kind of a a nice slow moving mist through the village here which looks really cool. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put the fog height back to zero which means unlimited height. And let's look at this sun shaft sample count. So that is a parameter when you're looking directly at the sun will determine how the sun shafts work. So let's get inside the village here and have a look at the sun. So right about here, you'll notice that there's some sun rays going on. And those look nice, but they only work if you're looking at the sun. As that sun goes out of view, those will fade away. So if you look away, they will go away as well. They're really kind of a direct view effect. And they have simple, similar parameters to the uh, full volumetric shadow parameters. They have a sample count, which helps eliminate flickering. So if you see the flickering being too much, you can raise that sample count. Or you can try tweaking some of the other parameters. Anyway, that's the full screen fog. So let's show you one more goodie here. I'm going to go ahead and turn the fog off. So let's get that intensity off and let's show you a couple of the volumetric prefabs in case you have say a sphere or, or a cube area that you want fog you can do that as well so let's bring those in as well we will just put them on top of the player for now So now they're sitting right where my camera was. I'm going to move away from them now and turn them on. So we've got first the sphere. Let's turn it on. And let's give it some bigger size so we can actually see it. So now we've got a sphere shape of fog. I am going to turn off the noise just so you can get a better idea of the shape of this thing. There we go. Sphere fog. So the sphere fog is nice. It blends great with the scene. You can make it a dome or a floating sphere of fog. Basically all the parameters of its profile are the same as the full screen fog except it doesn't have those full screen sun shafts. Because it's not a full screen effect it's really tricky to get that right so for now that's not available but you do have the volumetric shadow effect for the sun if you want that. 
So that's the fog sphere. And we also have the fog cube. Let's make it a little bigger. And we now have the cube. So let's get rid of that rotation. There we go. Okay, there's our cube. And it also can blend well with the scene. We'll turn off that noise so you can see the shape of it as well. There's my profile. We'll turn that noise off. There we go. There's our fog cube. So you can go inside of these and it's just regular old fog until you come out. So that's great if you've just got a section of your game you want to make foggy. Just drop one of these spheres or cubes in there and just that part will be foggy. This concludes the tutorial of Weathermaker Volumetric Fog. Hope you enjoy it. Please email me, support at digitalruby.com, and I would love to hear your feedback or any questions you have about this. And best wishes on your game and project.